Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. I'm Linda, a first year DIFL student at the University of Oxford and I'm working in the ultrasound neuroimage analysis group. I'm supervised by Anna Namouret and today I will um, present to you my work about improving unit segmentations with active contour based label correction. In the last couple of years, deep learning methods have shown excellent performance for all kinds of segmentation tasks. However, the disadvantage of this method is that you need pixel accurate uh, labels and it's very time consuming to acquire these labels and they're also quite prone to error because it can be very hard to distinguish the exact structure boundaries. For medical images, um, there are some additional challenges. You usually need a medical clinician to do your annotations and it's even harder to get them to spend time doing this. And also some of the medical images are 3D volumes and accurately segmenting a structure in 3D is even more challenging. So this usually results in some kind of label noise um, in your training labels, and this is not always accounted for. So in my group, we're working with ultrasound images, and we noticed that the problem of label noise was especially pronounced uh, for these images. As you can see here on the left, which is an actual fetal brain slice, structure boundaries are really hard to distinguish in these images. Uh, it's because ultrasound images generally have a lot of speckle and also um, shadowing. So for this reason, segmenting is very challenging. Another problem, which you can see on the right here, is the segmentation in 3D. Um, so on the right, the posterior ventricle horn has been segmented, but it has been segmented on the coronal planes. So as you can see in this plane, the segmentation looks quite good and smooth, but in the axial plane, the resulting segmentation is very jagged and not very accurate. Of course, you can go back and forth between the different views, but it is a very challenging task. Um, so for this reason, there will be always some label noise in our, um, in our training labels. In the past, active contours have been used to um, segment uh, structured ultrasound or other modalities. Uh, active contours is an energy minimization algorithm of initial contour to, co to grow to coincide with image boundaries. Um, the energy consists of an external energy, which is determined by image features, and an internal energy, which determines the shape of the contour, um, such as smoothness and curvature of the uh, contour. So Active Contours was able to segment structure boundaries very precisely, but is very dependent on the um, initial contour. Because active contours is able to, um, to align an initial contour with the image edges so well, uh, we wanted to use active contours to correct our noisy segmentation labels. So we want to use an edge map of the image to guide the active contours. In this way, we hope that the active contours can ensure better edge alignment of our annotations. So on the bottom of the slide, you can see an example. On the left, there is an edge map of one of our ultrasound images. In the middle, there is an original quite noisy and a label because you can see it doesn't align with the image edges too well. And on the right, there's a corrected uh, label and this label aligns with the image edges way better. Subsequently, we want to train a unit um, with these updated labels to predict the boundaries of our structures. And we want to train a unit with these um, contours instead of applying them directly because this overcomes the need for initial contours for new data, uh, which is way more practical. However, optimizing a contour involves parametrization of the contour, which can get quite challenging for complicated contour shapes. For this reason, we implemented our active contour label corrections using level sets. And the level set method simplifies contour evolution by considering the contour as a plane intersecting a surface. This makes evolving the contour easier, especially for topological changes of the contour, such as merging or splitting. In the level set loss, the contour is defined as the plane where a certain level set function is zero. So above the plane, the level set function is larger than zero, and below the plane, the function is smaller than zero. So as you can see on the image here on the slide, the red um, surface represents the level set function, and the plane um, is the resulting contour. If we now evolve this, uh, level set function over time, the resulting contour does changes as well. The evolution of the level set function can be um, described with the formula shown here. 
in which u represents the level set function. The, um, the g edge is the energy function, and this includes the image information in the um, level set evolution. Then we have two parameters, the k, which controls the curvature of the contour, so the smoothness, and c, which is a constant velocity, and which ensures that the contour doesn't get stuck in local minima of the image. Um, then our energy function does incorporate image information, and in our case, we want to incorporate direct edge information. So for this reason, the energy function um, consists of um, edge features from the image. Um, so what is our experimental setup for this work? We have two data sets available. We have the three, a 3D fetal brain ultrasound, which is from the Integro 21st. And in these images, uh, we segment the cavum septum pellucidum, the CSP, which is a fluid-filled cavity, which is present uh, in the fetal period only and should always be observed in this period. So we used um, scans of a gestational wee age from 20 to 26 weeks, and we have a total of 153 volumes. The second data set we have for this study is the 2D, the 2D adult cardiac data set. And for this data set, there are ethical two chamber views, two chamber views available. And in these scans, we segment the left ventricle. We have a total of 900 scans from 450 patients because for every patient, there is um, an systolic and an diastolic view available. So how did we acquire the labels for our data set? For the fetal brain data set, we used an atlas-based method. Um, so we have an, a fetal brain atlas for each of the respective gestational ages available, and we segmented the CSP in this atlas. Then we used an inverse transform to uh, propagate the labels from the atlas to the individual volumes. This just results in some noise in the individual labels because the atlas propagation is not perfect. For our test set, we um, manually corrected the ground truth labels, so these labels are considered to be um, noise free. Then we have our cardiac data set, and this data set has, com has been completely annotated by the cardiologist. And, um, but however, because ultrasound images are so hard to um, segment, we assume some label noise in these annotations. Um, for the testing set in this data set, there are no manually correct labels available. So as I described a few slides um, back, we're using an edge map in the energy function of our active contours. And for this, we use the feature asymmetry. This, the feature asymmetry is the even and odd filter responses of the log Bohr filter at a certain wavelength. Um, and this has shown to extract um, edges in ultrasound images very well. So for this re reason, we use this one. For our fetal brain images, we use a um, single scale um, filter um, because this gave us the be best edges. And for the left ventricle segmentation, we used a combination of um, three different wavelengths and the multi-scale feature symmetry is then an average of those three scales. Um, as we said before, we are basically pre-processing our, pre our labels with active contours to improve the labels. And subsequently, we train a network, a UNet, with these labels. So determine, to determine the baseline architecture of this network, we perform threefold cross-validation with the original noisy labels for both data sets separately. Um, for the fetal brain data set, this resulted in a UNet with a depth of four and a number of uh, feature maps in the first convolutional layer block of 32. Um, with every subsequent layer block, the number of convolutional filters then doubles. For the cardiac data set, we also use a uh, depth of five um, and an initial number of feature maps of eight. So what experiments did we do? For both data sets, we did experiment one and two. One is the baseline, so training our unit with our noisy training labels. And the second one is the unit with our active contours applied. So we have our noisy training labels, then we apply active contour label correction, and then we subsequently train a unit with these updated labels. Because for the fetal brain data set, we have manual labels available for our test set, we also do two other evaluations. The third one is the direct evaluation of the atlas labels. 
So um, we evaluate the atlas labels of our testing set versus the um, manual labels in the set. So this gives us an idea of the level of error in our atlas labels. And then the fourth one is where we um, apply active label correction directly to the atlas labels in our test set. And then uh, we evaluate the result of this instead of training a unit with them. So because we're predicting boundaries, a normal uh, volumetric guise is not very suitable. So for this reason, we use two um, uh, surface-based metrics to evaluate our performance. The first one is the average surface distance. And this calculates for every point on the ground foot, the shortest Euclidean distance to the prediction and the other way around and average all those distances. Then the surface dice is the second metric we used. This one is very similar to a normal dice. However, pixels on the two boundaries are considered to be overlapping if the shortest Euclidean distance between the pixels uh, is smaller than a certain tolerance. Uh, this tolerance was set to 0.6 millimeter for the Kaven prediction and set to 1.8 millimeter to the left ventricle prediction because the left ventricle um, is a larger structure. So what are our results? To start with, how did the label correction look? So here on the left, you see the original slice of a volume. Then in the middle, the initial noisy label. And then on the right, you can see the contour evolution. So as you can see, um, after evolution, the resulting contour aligns way better with the image edges. Um, and here the same is shown for the left ventricle label correction. So again, you can see that initially the contour is very smooth and doesn't really follow the image edges very precisely. And on the right, you can see that the contour has evolved to fit the image edges a lot better. So subsequently, we trained the unit with these updated labels. And on this slide, the results of these unit predictions are shown. So two examples are shown, both from the fetal brain data set. In the second column, the feature asymmetry is shown, so the edge lock we used. In red, we have our manual ground truth. And then the two green columns are the unit and the unit in combination with active contour correction. So as you can see, the active contour predictions in combination with the unit are way more precise. So uh, the predicted boundary is a lot um, narrower. And also you can see that it aligns to the image edges a lot better. So the unit, the standalone unit predicts a quite broad range around the image boundaries, whereas the unit with active contours um, predicts a narrower range exactly at the image boundaries. So this shows that the active contours definitely do improve the label, um, label accuracy. So for the left ventricle prediction, we see a similar pattern. Uh, the unit predicts a very approximate shape. Um, and it must be uh, said that the, ground, the shown ground smooth here is the original one. So it's considered to be noisy, but it's, it's still good to see. And then the last column, we see our unit plus active contours. And we see that the predictions here are, again, a lot more precise, especially at places where there is strong edge support. And where there is little edge support, so on the right top corner, you can see that the predictions are less certain. Um, and this does represent the actual certainty because in these regions, it's also way harder to manually segment the left ventricle. So for the cave and segmentation, we also have some, some quantitative results because we have, um, we have manual labels for a test set. So here the four, ex four experiments are shown. I described a few slides back. So we have our atlas labels, which is the level of error in our noisy training labels. And then we have our unit trained with these atlas labels. So as you can see, the error in these two um, methods is the same, showing that the error does directly propagate from the labels to the unit predictions. And then in the last two columns, there's the active contours, so directly applied to the atlas labels in the test set, and the active contours in combination with unit. So both of these two methods are significantly better than training a unit um, with noisy um, labels directly. Um, and also both of these, me these methods show a similar performance, again, showing that the level of error in the training labels um, is directly transferred to unit predictions. Um, however, the advantage of using uh, a active contours in combination with a unit 
is that we don't need any um, any initial contours for future segmentations or for future scans. So to conclude, the active contour label correction results in an improved segmentation performance. And most notably, it results in a better alignment of the resulting segmentations with the actual image edges. It can be applied as a relatively simple pre-processing step. And although we only showed here for ultrasound scans, we think it's suitable for a wide range of data sets. Um, so this was my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, you can email me at the email address shown on this slide.